Welcome back to Sports Gambling Daily. It is a Saturday. It is June 15th. I got my boy Chase in the house. What's up, Chase? Not much, Jared. Uh, just happy to be here. And so the reason why we got Chase on here is because this guy's been crushing it in the Super Regionals in college baseball. And I was like, you know what? College World Series is about to start. So we got to get this man on here to spread some of that fine, fine knowledge that he's got. Um, make sure you check him out on Instagram and on Twitter real quick. So what are those two handles you got? Yeah, so Instagram and Twitter, same thing. Chase, love it, L-O-V-E-I-T. Uh, Jared will have the handle sound in the description, so you guys can just click on them right from there. That's right. So uh, Chase is a member in the Discord. He also goes by the tag of Laurel in the Discord. And you guys definitely need to be in the Discord. There's so much good information being passed around. Uh, Laurel slash Chase, he's been in there just crushing it. Uh, and we have tons of good members in there. So make sure you come hit me up on Instagram so you can be part of the group. Um, you won't be, you know, you, you, you literally can't go wrong if you're in the discord. Also, before we get into this college baseball slate, I want to mention that we have our premium package for sale. The link is going to be in the description. Um, we are focused on major league baseball right now, but for now, let's talk about some college baseball. Now the college world series is where it's at right now. Uh, you can bet these games on Bovada. Uh, there are lines up, and uh, we're going to get into our first matchup, uh, Chase. So we got Michigan taking on Texas Tech. Now uh, this game, first pitch, is uh, one o'clock today. So what do you, you know, one o'clock Eastern time? What do you, what are you thinking here? Yeah. So this is this might be the game that I'm actually the most excited about on the board. So I'm happy that it's the first one off. So uh, for you guys who don't know, um, one thing that's really cool about college baseball is the tournament's set up very similarly to basketball. However, the teams are put into pods of four, just like with college basketball, how there is a first four in and a last four out. Uh, we actually have two teams here that were a part of the sort of the, the last four in. Um, one of those teams is Michigan. Another one of those teams uh, is Auburn. So we have two of those teams who are, you know, sort of Cinderella's here who are, you know, playing in the final eight, which is really cool. Uh, Michigan and Texas Tech, they actually played this year. Texas Tech swept the series during the year, uh, which would make the public from the outside, you know, of course, be sort of on Texas Tech. Michigan's right. coming with the record of 46 and 20. Uh, Texas Tech coming in with the eight seed overall uh, is 44 and 18. Last I checked, uh, Texas Tech is the betting favorite at, uh, I believe, minus 160-ish in that range. That's uh, correct. Uh, Texas Tech minus 160, Wolverines plus 140, over under is at 11. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, pitching matchup here. So Michigan is throwing Kyle Kaufman, the 77th pick, to the Colorado Rockies. And Texas Tech will be going most likely with their uh, freshman uh, Micah Dallas. Um, so, you know, you can't get picked as a freshman. I believe Dallas was picked out of high school. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, one of those guys who had his heart set on Texas tech. So no reason to sort of draft him high, uh, in the draft. Um, I want to talk about Kaufman really quickly. Uh, so Kaufman in his last three starts, uh, 8.2 innings pitched. That was against number 22 Creighton, uh, in the regionals, um, 8.1 innings pitched. Uh, with two earned runs, that was against number one UCLA uh, in their 3-2 victory. Mm -hmm. uh, huge, huge upset, so UCLA came in the number one seed the entire tournament. And then um, also during the regionals, I believe her last game in, uh, in the Big Ten tournament uh, against Ohio State, eight innings pitched, two earned runs. So this is a guy who's thrown 24 innings uh, in his last three games, and he's let up four runs. Wow. which is ungodly, really, yeah. and especially for college, which traditionally is, is putting up a lot more runs than the major leagues. For a guy to be throwing eight innings and, and really not being touched against good teams, I mean, creating UCLA, Ohio State, these were all teams in the tournament. Uh, UCLA, again, best team in the country. And then we're looking at the other side of the pitch. Um, so Texas Tech, they're coming in with uh, a player who you guys might recognize from the MLB draft. Josh Jung was the Big 12 Player of the Year. 
drafted number eight overall by the Texas Rangers. Uh, this was a guy who in the Super Regionals against Oklahoma State, he had three home runs in three games. Wow. There's a reason why, you know, this guy was picked so high. He's a really, really talented player. But there is something that I want to point out here. Texas Tech is a completely different team at home than they are at away. They have a record of 30-7 and seven at home, 10-7 and seven away, 4-4 four and four on neutral fields. Um, so my personal opinion on this game, I really do think that it, it is a toss-up. Um, if anything, uh, I'm going to have to lean Michigan just because Kaufman has just been absolutely untouchable in his last three games. And, you know, I know that Texas Tech has been hitting the ball well, but they're a different team on the road. Uh, another thing I want to point out, so the Big Ten tournament, uh, Michigan is the only team left in the Big Ten. The Big okay. Ten tournament this year was played at this stadium in Omaha, Nebraska. So Michigan has experience playing in this stadium. So if I were to pick on this game, you know, knowing that Texas Tech did sweep Michigan in the regular season, I still got to go with Michigan because this is at a completely different venue. Texas Tech is a completely different team at home. Um, and I just really like Kaufman right now. He's, he's playing so well. Uh, and if there's anyone who's going to shut down the Texas Tech offense, it's got to be him. Uh, if I had to take a lean on the side, mm -hmm. uh, I'd have to go with the under only because, you know, if I'm going to bet on Kaufman here, I'm also going to bet on the under. Michigan has been struggling to put up runs uh, in the past couple of games. Um, all the games against UCLA went under, I believe, under the total. Um, and so for that reason, uh, I'll go with Michigan and the under. So we got some value on Michigan and the under. You heard it here. Hey, you can get the under at even money right now on Bovada. So there is some good things there. All right. Hey, let's look at this next matchup. It's going to be the next game after this game. Uh, um, today, so we got 6 p.m. matchup. We got Florida State versus Arkansas. So, um, do we see any value here? At Arkansas minus 190, or is Florida State at plus 165 going to do the job here? And you also have a total of uh, 10 and a half. Um, where, what should we be looking for in this matchup? Yeah, so for Florida State, uh, they're coming in. 41 and, uh, and 21 versus number five, Arkansas, 46 and 18. Arkansas was in the College World Series finals last year. They lost 2-1 to Oregon State. They were an error away from winning the whole thing. So this is an experienced team. Mm -hmm. uh, them and Vanderbilt are, are the Caesars Palace uh, is the um, spot that has the futures open. Uh, they're both the, you know, betting favorites at, at plus 300 right now. Okay. Um, so for Florida State, uh, you know, one thing I want to point out is these bets are, are action only. So um, at this point, we don't actually know all the starters for the games. We can kind of assume them for the most part. In mm -hmm. Florida State's case, we don't actually know whether they're going to go with Van Aik or Parrish. Uh, so Van Aik and Parrish are, have been their two sort of stars this year. Um, they've been alternating, you know, who's the Friday guy um, and, and who's, you know, the, the next up. So we'll see who they go with. On the flip, Arkansas is going to go with Isaiah Campbell, 74th pick uh, to the Seattle Mariners. So that's a second round pick. Um, a couple of other things I want to point out in this matchup. So Florida State, uh, they just beat a pretty weak LSU team. So this isn't the LSU team of a few years ago that had Bregman along with seven other guys who were picked in the top five right. rounds. In the <laughs> it's like, draft. A, like a minor league team. Yeah, yeah. So this isn't a stacked LSU team that they beat. LSU was on a down year. Florida State took advantage of them. One thing I do want to say, if there's any story to follow for the College World Series, mm -hmm. if you've ever watched college baseball, something that you need to know about. So Florida State's coach, Mike Martin, he's in his 40th and final season coaching for Florida State. Good and Lord. he's got a record. They, they say that there are certain records in sports that will never be beaten. One of them is, you know, Michael Phelps gold medals. Another one that's really famous, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar points. Mike Martin, uh, I think, is up there with unbeatable records. He won 40 games each of his 40 seasons coaching in college baseball, making him the most winning college baseball coach of all time. I think that baseball could be around for another 300 years, yeah. and we will never ever no one will ever see that again so hats off to mike martin yeah by uh, far. i know that you know the casual should be rooting for florida state if you don't have a a dog in the fight 
but uh, I think that this dog in uh, this in Arkansas uh, is or this you know beast, let's say, is going to be a little too much for them. So uh, Isaiah Campbell is coming in with a twelve and one record. He has a two point two six ERA with more than 111 innings pitched. He is the workhorse of this team. To put that into perspective, the next most innings pitched on the team uh, is Nolan with 74. So Campbell has thrown uh, more than 1.4 times the next uh, most on the team. Um, yeah, they've also got you know plenty of star talent in the majors, so I just want to talk about real quick. Drew Smiley, Dallas Keuchel, Andrew Benintendi mm-hmm. uh, was, you know, an absolute rock star for Arkansas a couple years ago. It's not to say Florida State is Luke Weaver, who a lot of you guys know he's been absolutely crushing it for the Diamondbacks. But if if I have to make a play on this game, I've got to go with Arkansas. Uh, you know, great story on Florida State for the casual. If you're not going to bet this game, we definitely pull for Florida State just because I'd love to see Mike Martin succeed. Yeah. But Isaiah Campbell is just way too good um He's a real Florida, dude. they're they're a good team uh obviously they've made it you know this far but you know arkansas just got too much going for them right now they're playing really really well and isaiah campbell has been pretty much unhittable the entire season uh he played against an Ole miss team in the super regionals that in the last two games i think or in the second game after him they're often struggled in the third game but in the second game after him i think they put up 14 runs and against him, I think it was one run in like eight innings or two wow. runs in eight innings. So wow. the guy is, is really throwing. Uh, and you're not the 74th pick in the in the major league draft if you don't know how to throw the baseball. So um, if I were to make a play on this game, uh, definitely Arkansas. And honestly, um, I would take him at minus 190. I, I feel pretty good about that pick. So I have a question for you. Um, so as far as like trying to figure out Who's pitching on the other side? Is there a so is there a way that we might be able to maybe f- figure that out before? If let's say you wanted to bet on Florida State, but you didn't you didn't know who the pitcher was, is there a way yeah. to try to ascertain that information before maybe the general public gets a hold of it? Or I mean, is there is there any angle there that we can get to maybe yeah, help our cause? That's, there? A, that's a great question. It's really a great question. So. I personally haven't found a really effective way of finding out the starters in these games so far. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, what I'm doing is I'm waiting till the absolute last minute uh, because before the games, the teams will post the starting pitchers on Twitter. Okay. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, and, you know, I've been placing my bets about 15 minutes before the game. There are some lines um, that, you know, you might want to hop on early. For example, if you do like Michigan, um, they have been dropping. Uh, so I think they opened up at like a plus 155, and they've slowly been going down. So if that's one that you want to hop on, uh, I would do that soon. But if there's a game, um, you know, like Florida State, for example, where you don't know the pitcher, um, you're probably just going to have to wait until you can be sure. I mean, it's more than likely going to be Parrish. Um, he's been, you know, their their main guy this year. But mm-hmm. Van Eyck has been pitching well, so I'm not so sure who's going to show up. All right. Hey, you guys heard it. This man knows his stuff. I mean, that's why I brought him on. Uh, Chase knows his stuff. Now, make sure you check him out on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Why don't you go ahead and give him your handle again? That's right. I appreciate it, Jared. So my handle for Instagram and Twitter is Chase Lovett, uh, L-O-V-E-I-T. I don't have, you know, too many followers in there, so I answer everybody. If you ever have any questions, if you ever want to talk, if for some reason, I don't know why you don't want to join the discord, <laughs> you can always hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Um, but you know, got to give Jared the plug. I wouldn't know him if it weren't for the discord. Everything he says is, is totally true. He's built out a really awesome, awesome, special betting community there. Um, and, uh, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be here. So I would definitely check it out if you guys haven't already. Hey, I definitely appreciate it, Chase. Now, hey, you heard the man. Go follow this guy. You're, you're literally costing yourself wonderful information if you don't. He's a cool dude. And we got another matchup here. Now, on Sunday, we got Louisville taking on Vanderbilt. Now, I think you might know a little bit about these Vander, Vanderbilt Commodores, but let me give you the lines real quick. We got Louisville plus 180. We got Vanderbilt minus 220. That's very chalky. 
over and under is 11. Now, Chase, does Vanderbilt yes, have it? Does, does, does Vanderbilt have it here? Or is Louisville going to sneak up on Vandy and have a big upset? Absolutely. So um, Vanderbilt is the favorite um, right now for a good reason. Uh, they have a 54 and 11 record. They absolutely dominated the SEC, which as we can tell, uh, the SEC has four of the eight teams in the College World Series are coming out of the Southeastern Conference. That's and right, Vanderbilt baby, SEC. Was, was dominating all of them. Um, and so Vanderbilt is a favorite for good reason. Okay. However, you know, Louisville's no slouch. Number seven, 48 and 16 record. Uh, and they just absolutely crushed, and I mean crushed, number 10, East Carolina University, who is also, you know, a traditional baseball powerhouse in the past couple of years. So, you know, they didn't just beat up on any slouch of a team. Now, you know, a couple more things that we need to take a note of. Louisville and Vanderbilt, they play in the regular season every single year. They're only two and a half hours away. I don't know how long ago that's been going back. I don't know if it's been a you know, five-year thing, 10-year thing, 15-year thing. But in my memory, since I've been following college baseball, uh, which is, you know, when David Price was playing for Vanderbilt, I went to Vanderbilt myself. So that's how you know. Maybe there's some bias here. Maybe <laughs> there isn't. Um, but, you know, in my memory, Vanderbilt plays Louisville every year. Again, they're two and a half hours away. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get into the pitching matchup. So Vanderbilt is more than likely 99% going to throw Drake Fellows. He was a sixth-round pick to the Padres. And Louisville is going to go with their ace, uh, Reed Detmers. So Detmers is a sophomore, so he was not picked yet in the Major League Draft. Just so you guys know, uh, in order to get picked in the MLB Draft, you either need to be a senior in high school or more than 21 years old. Therefore, usually freshmen and sophomores in college aren't yet eligible to be drafted to the Major Leagues. Uh, there is occasion sometimes where there's great junior players who aren't actually 21 yet. They might not turn 21 until their senior year. So those players as well, they can't be drafted. So um, Detmers is, is one of those players. He's not, you know, a young senior. He is a, a sophomore, uh, but he's an incredible pitcher. So let me just read off his stats to you. Detmers okay. has a 12 and four record and a 2.85 ERA. Here's the ridiculous stat. Okay. Detmers has a whip of 0.89. And opponents are batting 178 against him. And this was in the ACC, right? So, again, no slouch of a conference. He just came off, again, a one-run performance against number 10 East Carolina. This guy can throw, and he's a lefty. And lefties are traditionally just dirty, dirty guys in college. Traditionally, um, the ability to bat against lefties as a lefty is something that comes in the minor leagues and maybe in the majors but it's not something that you'll traditionally pick up on, you know, when you're a younger player. Well, Vandy has a lot of lefty bats. So okay. that's one thing that I wanted to point out there. Another thing that I want to say is Detmers actually went against Vanderbilt last year in the regular season. As I said, these teams play once a year. Detmers got the better of them last year. I believe he pitched uh, like 5.1 or 5.2 innings and let up one run. Um, so he has experience against this Vanderbilt club. Uh, and then on the flip side, we have Drake Fellows throwing for Vanderbilt. Drake has a 4.15 ERA, but an eye-popping record of 12-1. and one. So no slouch on the other side of the mound. Right. However, I do want to say this. Fellows is coming off a very struggling performance against Duke. Um, they put up a total of, I believe, 18 runs against Vanderbilt that day, and I believe Fellows was out of the game in the second inning. This is a guy who's absolutely looking to bounce back. Um, he's looking to get the win here. Uh, however, you know, given that Detmers is, is such a good pitcher, and if you go back in history, Louisville, before this year, had won the last three matchups against this team. Um, Louisville has beaten Vanderbilt in uh, the Super Regionals before. That was back in um, 2013. Vanderbilt got the better of them in 2014 behind Carson Fulmer, who's now a pitcher for the White Sox. Right. This is a, these are two teams that have a lot, a lot of bad blood. Um, and they're also two teams that are hitting the ball really well. So Vanderbilt bats, eight out of nine bats in the Vanderbilt lineup are batting above 280 this year. And for Louisville, 
Yeah, if that impresses you for Louisville, nine out of nine bats are above 280 this year. That's insane. So these teams are offensive beasts and pitching yeah. beasts. Um, another thing, last thing I want to point out before I get into, you know, final thoughts on this game. Um, if you're a Giants fan, San Francisco Giants, definitely watch Louisville. The Giants drafted um, Wyatt and Fitzgerald, who are the three and four hole hitters, respectively, for Louisville in, I believe, the like second and fourth round. So I don't know who the Giants scout is over in uh, Kentucky, but yeah. he's definitely – some pull. Um, so that's what I'll say. But, you know, so we're going here. We've got two teams that are both incredible, right? Don't get me wrong. Both teams are incredible. Both pitchers are incredible. Detmers might be a little bit more polished than Fellows and is coming off a hotter start. Uh, but given that, you know, even though Vanderbilt is, is such an incredible team, Louisville's no slouch, I can't justify taking Vandy at minus 220. If there's a play in this game, you go with Louisville plus 180. It's honestly a coin flip of a game. I'm not saying Vanderbilt can't come out and beat them, you know, seven nothing or something like that. But if I'm if I'm a better, if I'm going to make a play on this game, there's not enough value on Vanderbilt here at minus two twenty against such a good hot Louisville team to really justify that pick. Yeah, and if, if it's a coin flip and you're giving me plus one eighty, I'll take that all day long. You know, that's long term value. You can't. You can't go wrong there. Now, what do you think about the over under here? It's 11. It's juiced up on the over at minus 115. Um, under is minus 105 uh, for uh, under of 11. Do you have a uh, you have a, a lean on that side? Yeah. Um, if I were to make a lean on the total, uh, I'm going to actually go with the under here. Um, I expect Fellows to now have a bounce back from his last game, um, mm-hmm. and additionally. Uh, if you go back in time, Louisville and Vanderbilt, these games do not tend to hit 11 runs. Um, as I said, there's a lot of history here. Obviously, you know, these are in different parts. They're with different players. But for the most part, you know, in college baseball, trends stay the same. Another thing that I want to point out is traditionally in this stadium, if you go back in time, College World Series Stadium, the new one in Omaha, has existed since 2011. If you go back in time and you say, hey, the average of each game should be nine and a half runs for a college baseball uh, game. I believe, like, I think I, I did the math earlier. Something like 63% of the games go under. And wow. that's nine and a half. So if you're seeing 11 and 11 and a half on these games, you know, going under is a pretty safe bet for the most part. Now, I will say this. Last year was the only year in history since 2011 that the average totals have been above nine and a half. Um, so last year, the games were actually going over that number and in the big 10 tournament this year which was again in that stadium in omaha those games were also going over so i wouldn't just bet the under blindly because you know there are these trends now in the last year year and a half that these games are starting to go over so i wouldn't just you know hammer the under because that's what usually happens here but you know that is something to keep in mind of traditionally college world series it's a you know pitcher's paradise Mm -hmm. there's a lot of games if you go back in time you're going to see Three nothing, two one, four one games. Uh, Hard and games. I really just expect this game to, to be a pitcher's battle. I think if if fellow struggles, Vanderbilt does not want to go into the losers bracket. They yeah. will yank him quickly, and I wouldn't be surprised. They have four quality starting pitchers. If you see another starter going after him, whether it be Mason Hickman or Patrick Raby, uh, Vanderbilt's got you know plenty of arms. So does Louisville. Uh, so if I'm going to make a play on the side, I'd, I'd probably go with the under. Yeah, it sounds it sounds. It sounds. You know, it sounds like the, these two teams are stacked. I mean, you got hitters on both sides. You got pitchers on both sides. I mean, it's, it almost sounds like this should be the championship game. Almost. Yeah. The, it could um, be. All right. So uh, let's go to the last matchup on Sunday at six thirty. You got the Auburn Tigers taking on their SEC foe, uh, Mississippi State. Um, a little rivalry, I would imagine. Uh, now you have Auburn Ti- uh, the Auburn Tigers at plus two hundred which that's the biggest underdog out of all four of these matchups with Mississippi State at minus 240. Now, this is all at Bovada, so they are actually the biggest favorite out of all these four matchups. Uh, Over-under set at 10, minus 110 is the is the juice on that. So you got Auburn taking on Mississippi State, um, SEC battle. What, what are you thinking here? Yeah, so, you know, these are two teams that obviously know each other well. They play each other every year. Auburn's coming in on fire. So is Mississippi State. Uh, Auburn is another one of those teams that most people probably wouldn't have expected to be this far. 
Um, you know, Mississippi State's coming in with a record of 51 and 13. They are the number six team in the country against Auburn, uh, who is coming in with a record of 38 and 26. Uh, I'm not sure if they even put up a positive record this year in the SEC. However, you know, this is a team with a lot of talent. Uh, for those of you who, who follow college baseball, you probably know the name Casey Mize was a pitcher for Auburn last year. Uh, he's now in the Tigers organization, mm-hmm. number one overall. So this is a team that gets some talent. Um, however, you know, this is what I'm going to say about this game. Um, Ethan Small, who's going to be the pitcher for Mississippi State, he has a 10-2 and record this year and a 1.76 ERA. And remember, this is in the SEC, which is the most dominant conference in college baseball. And this guy, Small, had a 10-2 and record and a 1.76 ERA. He was a first-round draft pick, I believe, to the Milwaukee Brewers. I could be wrong, but he was picked right in the in the 30s range. Yeah, he was he was picked by the Brewers, and opponents are batting against him 0.164. Jesus. Um, this guy is a stud. Yeah. Definitely. Here's what I say about Auburn pitchers. So Auburn has a stud of their own. His name is Tanner Burns. However, Tanner Burns has been banged up. He's been injured for a majority of the year. I'm not sure if he's going to be pitching today or if he's going to be pitching on Sunday, this is the biggest question mark of of all the pitchers. No one knows who Auburn's going to throw. No one knows if Tanner Burns is going to be healthy. Uh, And I will say this, uh, Auburn's top player this year, his name is Will Holland. Going into the year, people were projecting Will Holland to be, you know, maybe a a first-round pick, second-round pick. He's been struggling pretty much all year. He was picked in the draft. He was their top pick. Uh, But I believe, you know, he slid to like the fifth or, or sixth round again. Could be wrong on there. Um, and another thing I want to say, so Mississippi State, traditionally just a baseball powerhouse. Names like Hunter Renfro, Mitch Moreland, Brandon Woodruff. So these are all guys who are, you know, tearing it up right now uh, in the majors. Um, so, you know, with what, I, with what the, the insight that I have in this game, you know, whether it is Tanner Burns or not, whether he is healthy, um, you know, you got to go with Mississippi State. If, if you're going to play this game, um, I understand they're the heavy favorite. They're the heavy favorite for a reason. This is a really good baseball team. This kid, Ethan Small, he can really, really throw the ball. If you're going to make a play, uh, I put it on Mississippi State. What about a total? <laughs> so here's where it gets interesting. <laughs> Mississippi State and Auburn have played three times this year. Okay. Uh, I believe all three of those games would have gone over this current total. And here's what I will say. The last game they played, the score was 15 to 20 in favor wow. of Mississippi State. Um, so if you're going to be a betting man here, betters beware. Um, again, you know, I believe that the unders in most of these games are safe. Um, I-, I can see Mississippi State, though, covering the spread by themselves. Um, you know, if I had to make a play on the side here, this is the lowest total, I believe, at 10. Yes. Um, you know, I'd, I'd probably have to play on the over, but I, I wouldn't touch this this spread at all. Um, I I just wouldn't touch it. I have no lean either way. Um, if you're going to make a play, you know, play on small. You can even play, you know, minus the one and a half on Mississippi State. Uh, I'm pretty confident in that. But, you know, I, I wouldn't make a play on, on the total. I mean, just from what happened in the regular season, um, you know, it's pretty hit or miss. I, I would want to lean under, but after you see games that are going 15 to 20 and like 12 to 9, you know, that that yeah. does not make me want to play, a, you know, a 10 run under. Sure. So if you if you take Mississippi State minus one and a half, you can get the juice of minus 145. That might be a little more easier to digest considering what you just heard about how powerful their lineup is. Um, so let's see here. Let's recap this thing. We, um, I did miss one of your totals uh, on the Florida State Arkansas. Um, we had a uh, a total yeah, of ten and I a half. Hope I gave a a, a total on that. Um, Florida State Arkansas. If I'm going to make a lean, uh, let's go with the under. Um, I just expect Isaiah Campbell to uh, you know really rip up this team. Um, mm-hmm. Arkansas has been hitting absolutely lights out. 
Um, but, you know, I expect if this game gets dicey at all for Florida State, they're going to put in the bullpen two innings in. Um, and, uh, you know, one thing I will say is the last park that Arkansas played in in Fayetteville was an absolute hitter's mayhem. I mean, the wind was blowing straight out to center field, mm-hmm. uh, really hot weather. And so that's part of the reason why those couple games against Ole Miss uh, were, were so high. For those of you who are following in the Super Regionals, um, I don't know if we'll ever see a baseball total set this high. But Arkansas versus Ole Miss, that third game had a total of 15. Um, wow. And it pushed. If that's going to tell you <laughs> that total pushed, there yeah, is a reason they set that line so high. Um, but if I'm going to make a play on this game, um, I don't see Florida State touching Campbell. I, I just think he's he's too good of a pitcher. He's been playing too well right now. Um, and Arkansas has got an incredible bullpen. So, you know, even if he gets banged up, you know, four or five runs in mm-hmm. three or four innings, They'll they'll put in their bullpen. They'll get the game. You they'll know, they'll, shut it down. they'll fight it down. Yeah, yeah. If if Florida State gets more than you know five runs, I would be absolutely shocked. So if I'm going to make a play in this game, uh, you know, it's got to be the under. And what we'd be hoping for here is that you know the Florida State pitching staff shows up again. Um, they did pitch well against LSU as a team, so you know it could easily happen again. Um, but if I'm going to make a play on the total, let's go with the under. Well, I'm convinced. I, I appreciate you coming on here, Chase. Now, let's go over these picks. You got Michigan. You got a lean on the under 11. You got Arkansas, lean on under 10 and a half. You got Louisville um, with a lean on under 11. And then Mississippi State with a lean on the over. Did I get that right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hey, everybody that's watching this program, Stop what you're doing. You go over to Instagram. You go over to Twitter, and you follow this man. This guy knows his shit. I mean, how do you not? Can you not tell? I mean, we're 30 minutes in, and it's, this guy's a wealth of knowledge. Chase, thank you so much for joining me today. Now, let's go ahead and put your uh, your Instagram and your Twitter out there again so everybody can follow along. Yeah, so once again, uh, Instagram and Twitter are Chase Love It. So, you know, no spaces, C-H-A-S-E. L O V I T. What do we love? Winning money, and that's, <laughs> that's right. Do if you follow me, as Jared said, uh, on the on the games that I am playing, I am 10, 1 and one so far. Uh, you know, since the super regionals, you know, I gave you know leans and, and ideas to what I think are going to happen. You know, in these let's say eight games, right? Because we've got you know four wins and then uh, you know some totals. But you know, probably I might play two of them. I might play three of them. So if you know you guys want to know exactly what I'm playing, hit me up on Instagram, hit me up on Twitter, or hit me up in the Discord. In the Discord. Thanks so much for having me, Jared. I really Chase, appreciate it. Chase, we got to do this again. Um, I mean, we got to do this soon. I love having you on. So uh, absolutely, if, you know, let's do it again. So, hey, we're gonna go ahead and sign off here. So, uh, good luck to you, Chase. Good luck to me. Good luck to all of us. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace. See you guys. Bye.